so fun. Maybe first tell us like, what are you currently doing as a professional? Mm. Apart from uh, doing coaching and counselling, uh, I spend actually most of my time in uh, schools. Uh, I take care of, uh, I, I, I like to label it after school care. Uh, so it's actually a program by the government uh, to uh, house the students in school, after school hours, because if you send them home, they have no one at home. Or they might end up on the street, you know, having a wrong friends and stuff like that. So they prefer to um, house them in school. Um, and then they will invite people like me uh, to go to the schools and teach them some of the life skills and sometimes it's just to befriend them. So I spend most, most of my time doing that. Ah, so as you can see, she's an experienced working with children and you. So maybe you maybe can share with us like um, your experience. I think it's important because a lot of me and our audience here want to know like, how's it like to cope with work and study at the same time? Mm. Yeah. I'm not going to deny the, the hardship of uh, studying and working right. at the same mm. time, but at the same time, it's very rewarding, uh, especially when you're able to use these skills mm. uh, to apply to your work. And the best thing about this thing, like I know, you know, Shenyong is here to tell you the therapeutic play, um, but in fact, what is really good for me and really beneficial for me is that these skills are used in everyday life. These skills improve a very simple relationship even within the family, even within myself. Mm -hmm. So this is not just, you know, like, oh, what, what if I don't become a play therapist? What if I don't become a therapist? It is still very useful in everyday life with every human connection. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we call therapeutic power of play, mm -hmm. you know, rather than play therapy itself. Mm -hmm. Show you guys maybe some example, like what are some skills that you have learned in the module you apply in your work? Because under child centered play therapy, there are different approaches, there are also different skills. We can name one or two and yeah, we can share them. So, um, the one that I use the most uh, is called tracking. And in fact, it's such a very simple skill because all you need to do is to just say what you see. And yet, this is so not practiced in our daily life. So, when it comes to um, for example, so if we are watching someone playing, so we love to give our interpretation to, to them. It's like, oh, you're doing this, oh, this is good, and this is all that. And, but sometimes it is not what they, what they are trying to express. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, they get disconnected. And, and then they might not want to share more with you after that. And tracking is just basically, it's like, oh, I see that you're really, uh, taking time to put this together. I see that uh, when you're doing this, something changed in your emotion. Mm. Mm, what is it? So when you do that, they share a lot with you. They want to share more with you. And that is how you actually connect with them even more. Mm. And I work with uh, at-risk or high-risk youth. And their life experience has been with, um, well, they have a lot of failure in life. That's how they ended up being in this category, right? and they live their life being told what they are not good enough at, mm -hmm. what they are not fitting in the classroom, what they are not doing as a, as a child uh, should be mm -hmm. uh, to make a family proud or like, I work so hard, you know, like how come I, I send you, I, I pay, you know, I work day and night just to send you to tuition mm -hmm. and then you come back with this kind of result and all that. So they have been invalidated their whole life. So, and a lot of people start asking me, oh, to do your work must be really difficult, right? Actually, actually once you learn the skill, right? Actually, no. Mm -hmm. I don't have to think too much. I just have to name what they are doing. Mm -hmm. I just have to track what they are doing and name it to them. And they will eventually share. And then once they feel connected mm -hmm. and once they feel safe, their brain starts to connect. Mm -hmm. And then they start to come up with their own solution. They start to come up with their own uh, explanation of what, it, what, what, what is happening to them, what is the surrounding, and my job is easy. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I simplify the work, but that's how I actually felt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, because Fern built the trust through tracking, being present with the person, mm -hmm. okay, and also giving the undivided attention. Mm -hmm. I think this is very important. I mean, back to my example earlier, right? Imagine if you play with a child and you're not playing, uh, paying attention, the child may eventually just do something else. Then you may not even notice. Mm -hmm. Then they just say, Mommy, you never play with me. No, I was there with you, I know why you play. No, I stopped playing and then you didn't pick up. Oh, then you felt guilty, right? 
So what Fern is doing is what we call tracking so that the child knows that we are being there, being present, and accept whatever they do. Even if they don't want to talk, it's fine. Yeah. And like what Fern mentioned as well, in their life, people always question them. Imagine just an adult, if your bosses always question you, how do you feel? Mm -hmm. They're like, ah, shut up, I don't talk to you anymore. But when child express such disagreement, why are you being so rude? Don't talk back to me. So, but it's true, uh, you're so annoying, you don't trust me, then why are you asking so many questions? Okay, so this is very important. And recently, during graduation, you talk about a principal teacher asked you, right, hey, what do you do that, wow, how come the children respond to you better? Do you want to share this? I thought this is very empowering. <laughs> I, get, I get a lot of teachers who, you know, when I take over their class, and at the end of it, they will come to me and say, I don't know what you do. He doesn't talk to anyone. I don't know what you do that they, they actually listen to you. Mm. And, and they, they ask me to share information with them. And mm. I basically just share with them, really um, connect with them first, right? So um, if I may share a little bit more uh, mm. theory, I hope I don't take too long on this. Mm. But you know, in animal kingdom, there are some animals that their DNA are put, uh, uh, in a way that you know, the moment you give birth to them, they can run free themselves. But humans, our DNA is based on connection. Our survival is based on connection. Mm -hmm. If a, big, a child is born, a baby is born, human, and they don't get attached to the parents immediately, they don't survive. And this is how our DNA is formed. And through this connection, um, and then the other thing to, to, to just share is that, you know, when you're stressed, do you think you actually think properly? Like when, you, when people are pressing you with a lot of uh, stress or questions, do you think properly? No. So, when, so this is what we call the, just like the Amidala, the fight, fight flight, flight, freeze mode. So a lot of times when we don't connect, um, when we ask a lot of questions to our kid, sometimes as simple as, hey, call the uncle, hey, how come you're so shy? Another teacher was stress, stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This this go into the amidala. They go into flight, fright, yeah. and freeze yes. mode. So and that mode, no one is learning, mm -hmm. right? So and through play, this is where we want to give them. We, we always say play is the best way to learn for anyone. It is when their brain is free mm -hmm. of stress of anxiety, and then that is when the brain actually can connect. Mm -hmm. And this is what um, I do with the kids. So a lot of times. Uh, I just yesterday I was in this class. It was a SVB class for Singaporean. You'll know what it is, SVB class. So this SVB is so confusing. So so for so many parents these days, it is a called a subject based bending. So basically, based on how they are doing, they, they put them into different class. So different subject they go into different class. Um, how much of the student population is actually going through this? Or is it like uh, our express, normal academic, normal technical? Yes, so they are, they are trying to abolish the whole thing and then they are trying to make it more holistic. But um, although they have a good, very good system, this idea is really good. But the teachers are not catch up with it yet. So the teachers are still very KPI based. So just yesterday, I was actually going into a school to play a game. Um, on well-being, on growth mindset with the students, a board game. So the school invited us to just go and play with them. Halfway through my session, the teacher come in, start giving out exam papers, result. <laughs> wow. With, and then I have students, so I, when, whenever I conduct workshop, my students are always those who need extra help, mm -hmm. extra motivations and stuff like that. So, we were just playing. We are just playing a game that is as simple as that's that is quite similar to sick and neither. This one child fall behind a little bit compared to his peer, and suddenly she just break down and cry. Yes, she crumbled. And I have three of them in my class yesterday in one and a half hours time. So it is very sad, but at the same time, so in this this kind of situation, a lot of adults, a lot of teacher, what would what would you go and tell them? Yeah, don't cry. Why cry? Why sad? Don't worry. You can do better. One, it's okay. Things will be better. It's okay. It's okay. We ended up invalidating them. Mm -hmm. We ended up not connecting with them. Mm -hmm. So, um, so my so what I do very simply is that I even if I spend just one minute of my time, although I have a huge uh, I have I have to deliver my course, 
I have only one minute. I took that one minute. Instead of just asking him about the exam, instead of asking him about that, I just connect with him by asking him, oh, so what you're currently doing or how, what you're currently feeling and all that. And then, blah, 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 all the things come out. My mom doesn't believe in me. My, my, my mom will kill me. My, my dad will kill me. My teacher say I'm not good, blah, 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 blah. everything come out. So bringing the connection first. You, instead of asking, hey, why are you like this? Hey, why you think like this? Why are you so sad? And they will just shut down. Or you just do a simple, you use one of these simple skills and they will tell you their whole life story and then by the time they finish their whole life story, they will be the one asking you for help. Mm -hmm. Instead of you telling them that nah, this is the tool you go and use, mm -hmm. which how many of you will willingly go and just take advice and go? Mm -hmm. Like how many times you tell something and then people just like, hey, here's your, right. here's, here, here's what you should do. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be like, ha, 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 ha. And then you go home and you do nothing. Okay. That's the same with the kids. So wait for them to ask for help. Yeah. So in play therapy session, child centered play therapy session specifically, we create this safe space for the child to express, for the child to do anything he or she wants, and we are there being present to acknowledge, to validate their feeling and experience without asking questions. So even the child cries, say, you look very sad after this. We stay there, we don't ask, why are you sad? Why are you not doing this? Why not do that? Or in, in other words, we don't give unsolicited advice. Yeah, a lot of times they just, okay, okay, but then it may not be helpful, or they don't care at all. Yeah, so this is the power of non-directive uh, play therapy. Yeah. And I'm glad that Fern has applied what she learned in her workplace and it did have some uh, results. Uh, I, I work from all the way from primary school to IT students. Mm -hmm. So the good, news, the, the good news about play is that it's never too old for it. It's mm -hmm. never, so even with my IT students, uh, when they are robbed of the experience as a kid to play and learn through play, right? It's never too late to apply this when you are older and reintroduce this and to re develop what has been missed. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so in my lesson, I will share a lot more how I use play with children and you. So if you are a kid, join us, then we can always learn together. Mm -hmm.